Welcome to the Friday Casebook. I'm Lina, a freelance journalist and moderator based in Munich, Germany. And thanks to Roger Casale, the founder of New Europeans, we are going to find out what has happened in the world this week. Hi, Roger. Hi, Lina. Great to see you. How are you? Roger, I want to know what captured your interest this week. Well, I'm going to have to deal again with the elephant in the room. Not that I have the slightest interest, I have to say, in this subject. But um, did you watch the Harry and Meghan interview, Lena? Not entirely. I still want to watch it this weekend. But yeah, I mean, I read a lot about it and it's in the news every day. <laughs> Please tell me everything about it. Maybe I don't need to watch it then. How can you bear it? No, no, no. It's like, I'm, I'm not very keen on football. I don't watch the football matches, but I like to hear all the chat about it afterwards. And I am certainly not going to watch the Harry and make an interview myself, but I know a lot of people have, and I, I hope you enjoy it. Um, there was a British journalist called Rob Peston from ITV who said on Twitter, what are the three words that you think of when you think about the Harry and Meghan interview? Three words that came to my mind, Lena, were opera, opera, opera. And she really is a, a class act, I have to say, Oprah Winfrey, whatever you think about the royal family, it's such a great opportunity to see Oprah Winfrey. And um, I'm going to show you a picture now of uh, Oprah Winfrey and how she reacted when they first suggested to her that she might like to be the person who interviewed Harry and Meghan. This is, this, is, this is what she said. You must be joking. <laughs> I think she must have taken some convincing. But I, as I say, I haven't seen the interview, but I, well, I have seen interviews with Oprah Winfrey after she did the Harry and Meghan interview, being asked about it. And I must say, this was very interesting. It's always interesting to hear Oprah being interviewed. And I thought what was nice about the way that she handled it was that she didn't talk about the royal family. She talked about them as if it were just a family. So she was asked about the famous quote about uh, skin color of the baby. And she said, well, I can tell you, it wasn't the grandmummy and it wasn't the granddaddy. You know, I just thought that really kind of makes it real for people, brings it down to earth. And of course, since the royal family communications machine has been mobilized and they've come out fighting, and uh, of course, they've, uh, they've said, we are not a racist family. We're not racist. We just were concerned about the skin color of the baby. <laughs> That's one thing they said. And another thing that they said was that, um, of course, the first thing they're going to say to you if you go to the uh, Buckingham Palace, and if you meet anybody from the royal family, obviously, the first thing they're going to say to you is, don't worry about where you come from doesn't matter where you come from in life, where you were born. What's important is what you can become. Apparently, what didn't find a way into the interview was the question if monarchy should find an end at some point. What is your point of view on that? Lena, if in 2015 you had given the British public a blank piece of paper and said, we're going to give you like the wish fairy, we're going to give you one referendum, write down here what it should be. Nobody would have written Europe on the paper, but I would have written monarchy on the paper. Let's have a referendum about the monarchy. And I think we would have had a very interesting debate. What else caught your eye this week? Well, Lena, you know, I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but here in Italy, it's starting to get uh, quite warm. And I'm jealous. The spring flowers are coming out. And if we it weren't in lockdown, it would be nice to go to the mountains even to Switzerland, and if, but if we'd been there last year, you have this sort of image of the alpine meadows with the beautiful flowers and the mirror and the, um, and the, and the quantons and the, and the church towers and so on, lovely idyllic scenes. And I thought I was looking at one of those scenes last week when I saw the image that you're about to, to show us of the Swiss uh, mountains, little canton, where they had a referendum, but unfortunately, is not quite as pretty as it sounds. Let's have a look at the Swiss Alpine Meadows for what they look like this year. There you have all the traditional elements, the, the, the snow-capped mountains, the, the church spires, the meadows, and you have this ridiculous poster, which I think is probably understandable in any language, 
uh, looks like some sort of, uh, Disney cartoon, and it's really ridiculous and offensive, and sort of suggesting that you know behind every Islamic man as an Islamic woman and behind every Islamic uh, w veil that an Islamic woman is wearing is some kind of sinister, nasty terrorist. I mean, this is absolutely shocking. I mean, I, I'm amazed that, that something like that was allowed by the advertising uh, watchdog in Switzerland, but obviously it was. And this was a referendum. We were talking about referendums before, a referendum as to whether uh, women in Switzerland want to, can, can continue to wear a full face fail, and not very many Islamic women in Switzerland. I think this is uh, going to be more directed at very wealthy uh, emigres and tourists from the Arab states who come to Switzerland to buy, I don't know what they buy, jewelry, watches, cuckoo clocks, chocolate, come out of their five star hotel wearing their hijab, and now they'll have to pay a fine because there was a narrow victory for those who want to stop women wearing a full face mask. It goes to show that if you want to win a referendum these days, whatever the referendum is about, whether it's Brexit or whether it's headscarves or it might be about school places or anything else, um, all you have to do is put a scary picture up and tell people that they're going to be invaded by these alien people from out of space who've got it in for us. Remember in Britain they talked about the invasion from Bulgaria and now in, uh, you've got these horrible eyes peering out uh, in, uh, in, in the Swiss mountaintop. I'm in favour of a lot of direct participation by citizens, as you know, that's what we're all about in Europeans, getting citizens more actively involved in decision making at the local, national and European level. But you also need to have representative democracy because the great thing about representative democracy is if you don't like something, you can vote that person out and put somebody else in. And that takes us neatly on to our uh, next issue because I'm sure I know uh, what question is going to be coming next. <laughs> Is on the naughty step. Well, I, I think face coverings are still the theme, Nina, uh, this week. They seem to be very much, very much the theme they were, and they're the theme uh, for the naughty step this week, because we've got two of your fellow countrymen, in fact, I would think on the naughty step. I hope we've got room for both of them. They do belong on the naughty step. <laughs> We know all about those. You've got George Nusslein, who's from the CSU in Bavaria, and you've got Nicholas Löbel. Both of them uh, were to recently uh, MPs in the German Parliament, uh, and they are also middlemen. They are wheelers and dealers. They look a little bit like wheelers and dealers in these photographs. And what they've been doing is they've been introducing their friends who own uh, companies uh, that uh, produce medical equipment, or in this case, face masks, um, to uh, state officials who've then given out these enormous contracts for producing, in this case, face masks, uh, and they get a cut, and then they come back into Parliament and presumably say, yes, yes, we should be giving the, giving the contracts to this uh, company. In George Nusslein's case, <laughs> In George Nisslein's case, he, 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 the money was even funneled via a kind of offshore account in the Caribbean. The Spiegel discovered this. And it's extraordinary that he didn't step down straight away. He said, oh, no, no, I think I'll, uh, I'll, I think I'll stay on for a bit. Both of them on the naughty step. Um, but I don't know if anybody's asking to give the money back. They, they, they made themselves millionaires. And it's, it's, it's very sad uh, when you think about the sacrifices that people are making and the people are at the front line of the fighting the pandemic putting their own lives at risk exhausted uh, unbelievable work that people are doing um, and then you have behind the scenes you have people who are in politics who are cashing in on the on the contracts and we, we need to hold those people to account and i'm glad that no time has been lost to do so in the case of these two mps in germany was there also a bright spot for you this week? A, our star of the week this week, I'm delighted to say, is a former EU commissioner. And her name is Violetta Bull. Under the Juncker Commission, she was a transport commissioner. And uh, she's Slovenian. And she is working with New Europeans and also with our partners in Italy called Humans, promote the idea of a European health union. And she has drafted a European health union manifesto 
you can find that on the New Europeans website. We ask you to sign up for it and we'll be seeing a lot more of Violetta in the months to come. Thank you very much for this week's Friday casebook, Roger. And you all out there, thank you for joining us this time. Please don't forget to subscribe to our New Europeans YouTube channel and take a closer look at the New Europeans website. See you next week. Thank you, Lena. Thank you to our audience, to our uh, community on YouTube and Facebook. And remember, we have the subtitles in many different languages. If nothing else, it's a great way to improve your English, we hope, by watching the Friday Casebook. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to subscribe. There's a little button down there, the red one that says subscribe. Press that, please, before you do anything else. And we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.